Hi, I'm Kristen, and this is the Simple Handmade Everyday Podcast, where I talk about living a creative and intentional life. I like to chat about quilting, sometimes knitting, what I'm reading and watching, and a little bit about keeping a cozy, organized home. I've got my cup of tea in hand, so let's settle in for a chat. This is episode 57. Welcome, or welcome back. I have my cup of tea. What is in your cup? Today, I've got this tea that I bought from Ikea. It's a black tea with uh, a bunch of sort of, I want to say dried flowers in it, sort of, um, it's very, it's very flowery. I love it. Um, And it's called (laughs) Egented, E-G-E-N-T-I-D. I've I've had it on the podcast before and um, a few people, uh, Elise over at Elise and Emily chimed in and said that it means something super appropriate. And I've already forgotten, like every day or something like that. So it is, it's a great everyday tea. So I hope that you have some sort of fun beverage in hand because we really need to focus on um, the fun and the pleasures in everyday life right now, right? Because people, that's all we've got. Noticing the little cozy corners of your home, the well-considered cup of tea, tea and cookie or you know whatever the flowers in your garden the the crunchy leaves all those sorts of things I think just really have to be where our focus is at um, because the big wide world is just too scary right now so um, I think those of us who sort of cultivate the noticing the everyday um, you know we've got a leg up on um, on some other people so I've been really trying to do that Um, I've been in truthfully a bit of a funk the last few weeks and realized Um, instead of just sort of powering through every day, I need to do, um, a little more stop and considering and, and just really indulge in the small pleasures. I definitely read somewhere that people who give themselves small rewards, small treats, um, they're happier, you know, the, uh, you know, latte in the afternoon, the just the little treats, because we don't get to go on, you know, big vacations and big trips. Even if we're not in a pandemic, we can't wait for those kind of times to be happy, right? So we need to um, notice the good things about our own circumstances. I didn't mean for that to turn into like me being preachy. But, uh, you know, it's something that I've been struggling with. And I figure you guys are too. Because here's the deal. I'm so tired of this pandemic. <laughs> And on top of all of that, it's college application season. And I've got a senior who's applying. It's so stressful. You know when you're a parent, I have three kids, right? And we knew the third one was going to be our our last child. And so while there were some milestones that um, I hit with like, oh, this is going to be the last time this is going to be I don't know the last crawling baby I love a crawling baby you know as soon as he learns to walk and he walked so early you know that I we're we're out of that stage forever well there are some milestones that I could not could not have been happier to say this is the last kid that we have to potty train for instance um teach to swim uh, those are those are milestones that were not uh, particularly like enjoyable or like not this this mean wasn't it wasn't that it wasn't enjoyable that it was like okay like the safety aspect is there um, and there are some other ones like the the last kid to learn to drive I did not enjoy my kids learning to drive <laughs> I feel like that is one of the very hardest milestones of parenting that nobody talks about is being in the car for the first time with a kid who doesn't know how to drive. Oh my gosh, it's terrifying. So anyways, um, so adding to the list of uh, potty training and sleeping through the night and um, driving, I want to add college application season. I will be so glad when college application season is over for his sake, mostly, but also my sake, because it's just, it's so stressful. So I just, my heart's sort of uh, breaking for this kid who's not really getting a senior year, but still has the stress of having a dozen ACT tests canceled on him, you know, and still trying to wonder how that's going to affect college applications. So yeah, um, I'm curious if you guys had certain uh, milestones with parenting that you were very glad that you didn't have to, uh, you know, relive again, go, okay, that's it. That's it. The, la- the when we, when we donated the, the bouncy seat, which I had stubbed my toe on a million times. That's another one. So anyways, um, it's college application season, which means it's fall trying so hard to, uh, 
transition to fall. The weather is not cooperating around here. We are back into another heat wave. It's not over 100 today, but pushing 100. I'm looking out the window. There's smoke everywhere. Um, but, I, you know, again, I don't want to complain because it's been pretty mild here compared to what is happening up north. But uh, I am mentally craving making soups, casseroles, and more roasted vegetables, all of those, baking bread, all those kinds of things that um, say fall. Um, I want to do those things, but we're still in that place where we're not turning on the oven. But we're not there yet, um, but I am completely and utterly bored with what we're eating, so I have dug into my cookbooks, and I pulled out a few to read for inspiration. I love reading cookbooks almost like they're novels, you know, all the inspiration behind them, to see if I can um, find some things. I found a book, uh, one of my cookbooks that has a lot of good-looking salads, and I basically make the same green side salad every day, and I'm sick of it. So I'm just going to see if um, I can mix things up a little bit. I just kind of pulled those cookbooks out yesterday, so I will let you know if I've got any fun, inspirational uh, recipes to share, but I'd like to get back to uh, making like one new recipe a week just to, to really mix things up around here. Um, the other thing that's been working for me in terms of my transition to fall is the foliage that you can get at Trader Joe's. So I learned from the nester through her books, uh, Cozy Minimalist and Welcome Home, you know, different ways to change up your house a little bit for the seasons. And um, she just like can go out to her yard and around and just, you know, clip these really cool looking dried grasses and things like that to put in um vessels around her house well there's nothing inspiring like that around me in the suburbs here and believe me i've tried we do have a, a japanese maple um, but it's in kind of not the right stage for it for it to look good if i clip a little twig or a branch here or there but trader joe's has um all kinds of a kind of uh, dried wheat and um cattails and I and they're real so it's not they're not fake they're just dried even some eucalyptus and some kind of weird thing that I got last week that I don't it must be some sort of sage or some sort of eucalyptus that I love I put a picture on my Instagram stories this week um, and it's alive so I just I do have water in the bottom and put it in a few vessels and um, it has kind of a spearminty smell to it and I've really been enjoying it so um, that's like my first step into uh, the seasonal decorating is just changing out um, <laughs> my what was frankly n never got changed over from winter to fall and see if I can remember to to change it over to winter and then spring this year and do a little bit better and um, so, yeah, so that's uh, been kind of fun. Once again, I'd like to thank Fat Quarter Shop for sponsoring the podcast. Fat Quarter Shop is a one-stop show for quilting fabrics and supplies for quilters around the world. They stock quilt shop quality fabrics, pre-cuts, quilt kits, patterns, notions, and even cross-stitch supplies. They've just announced their 2021 um, charity quilt along called the Serendipity quilt and stitch along this year. They're including a cross stitch component. So they invite quilters and cross stitchers to join them in supporting the Make-A-Wish Foundation for this quilt along and stitch along. The quilt is beautiful and it features Corey Yoder's line Spring Brook. Here's how it works. Here's how it works. From February through June 2021, they will post a free quilt block, cross stitch, and finishing patterns on both their blogs that you can download and print on the 1st and the 15th of each month. They'll also post tutorial videos for the quilt, and it's all for charity. They ask for, um, they suggest a donation of $5 per pattern or a total donation of $50, and it goes to the uh, Make-A-Wish Foundation. And both the Fat Quarter Shop and Moda will match up to $30,000. So it's a beautiful quilt for a beautiful cause. So I'll put a link in the show notes for you to make a reservation if you want to join them. Let's move on to quilting. I finished my Rooftop Wonders Solids Quilt. Oh my gosh, it has been two years in the making. And um, I am pleased with how it came out. For the millionth time, I used the Rooftop Wonders Quilt Pattern from Amy Ellis from uh, Amy's Creative Side. And I used solids from Paintbrush Studios. And when it all came together, it was so busy. 
<laughs> and I kind of, I really, I was like, I don't know if I like this. Once I got all the blocks actually sewn together, it started to grow on me, but it's very much outside my comfort zone, to be honest with you. Um, I love the colors of it. Um, I love that it looks uh, abstract and random. My friend Frances said it, it reminds her of Legos, which it totally does now that she says that. I was thinking more like Minecraft, you know, it seems very computery looking. Um, and I don't know, it's one of those things that I love that quilt pattern when I got it. And then as I just, I, by the time I got to the end, I was like, oh, I don't know. And then when it was all together, I was like, okay, maybe. We did decide to keep it throw size um, because it is so busy. We decided it, we didn't want it to be a quilt, uh, a uh, bed size quilt which still leaves this child with a need for a bed size quilt <laughs> so I didn't even solve that problem um, but it's very soft and the colors I just I really love those paintbrush studio solids I really do um, so it is off to the long armor I did a pieced back because I had three uh, blocks left over which is the width of the quilt so then I just improv I extended those blocks in an improv way to give you know uh, myself an extra overkill but like six inches on each side that you need when you're you know you need your quilt back to be bigger than your quilt front and um so there's there's about the that line of blocks is about two-thirds of the way down you know what i've realized and i think i've known this for a while and i keep forgetting it that when i do that pieced row it needs to be more like three quarters of the way down and not two-thirds two-thirds is still too high but it is what it is for this one um so that is off to the long armor. Um, my son and I sat down um, and sifted through uh, quilting motifs. Um, it's the whole thing's very linear. It's all trying, uh, triangles, rectangles, and squares. Um, and so we went with some like cur just curvy lines, just curvy lines through it is what he liked. Um, and so that is shipped off to the long armor, Deanna Sanzano from Sewing Blue. I will put a link in the show notes. Um, she does a great job. Uh, she does a lot of the, co the computerized edge to edge, super prof professional, quick turnaround. She's got lots of great motifs to choose from, so could not recommend her more highly. So that feels really good that, that we've moved on. So my next quilt, so I, I've got quite a bit of these um, solids from Paintbrush Studios left over, and I came across a quilt um, on Instagram do you save I have a little you know saved collection for called quilt love and it's a quilt called brush strokes from the company of shiners view the the woman her name is Lisa Roddy and I want to call it um, like beginner improv so I'll, I'll put a link in the show notes but she has this it was a free pattern and how do I want to describe this it's just uh, the blocks are a background and one color um, and they're just the the lines are you know sort of different they're not uh, just completely straight they kind of go at different angles and um, you are encouraged to do your own thing with that but but she has you know like do some sort of like this and some sort of like that and she says background plus three fabrics and the one that I saw was so fallish. It was navy and gold and gray and a maybe like a dark orange burgundy-ish. I can't quite remember right now. Very fall colors. And I loved it. And I'm like, I have all those colors left over. So I dug them out of, you know, my leftovers and realized that I probably don't have quite enough of each of those left over. But I... I, I just pulled out all the fallish colors. So I've got a few different colors of the um, the orange and a burgundy. Um, I even have a green that I could throw in there. Uh, I'm kind of so off green, which is so funny because my bedroom is green and this chair next to me is green and the, my uh, bridesmaids wore green. There was a time I loved green and apparently I'm off of it now. Um, but anyways, I, so it's going to be a little bit more, I don't I want to call it scrappy, but only color wise. Um, and I have a ton of background fabric left over of a very light gray. And so I think this will be really fun. It's, it's kind of a little bit of a planned improv, as my friend Sarah Goer would say. So I've got the fabric pulled for that. I did a little bit of a cleanup of my space after I sent the quilt off to be quilted and did a little bit of a, a 
a rearranging in my space. I mean, I, com- I complain about my, my sewing space incessantly <laughs> on the podcast, <laughs> but um, it just, it wasn't really working for me. So I, I have this design wall that I temporarily have now have put behind the china cabinet where it's always, um, you know, out and even folded up my ironing board and started moving some furniture around. And I've got this big basket of scraps and when i say scraps it's, it's funny when you hear people talk about scrap management um they're like well if it's you know the size of a fat quarter then do this with it and i'm like my whole stash is fat quarters so like anything that's a scrap is more like you know a strip or a two and a half inch square you know it's a bunch of little stuff but i throw them in there and i'm not exactly sure what i think i'm going to do with them um because they are really small the only thing that's not really small is when I trim up a quilt and you know how the quilt back needs to be bigger than the quilt when I trim that up I usually save those because they're you know can be like four and five inch wide pieces of fabric um, still often kind of sewn onto batting a little bit that I figure I'll rip off later but yeah so I just I had this over flowing basket as a matter of fact I just I went and got a trash bag and and just started throwing things into one of those big black trash bags looking at it thinking is there anything to do with this will you ever use this and I could not bring myself to throw it away Um, I don't even know if I donated it to a quilt guild I mean it just seems like in some ways too small of pieces that anybody would really care about so I can't quite decide what to do about that what I have started doing is being brave enough to just throw away odd bits of fabric just knowing that you're probably not going to do anything with them um but i do in a few minutes actually i'll do it right now um i want to talk about a quilt book from sherry mcconnell from a quilting life and i've talked about her before i've um i've i love her fabric i've bought other books of hers she has a fantastic quilt blog and where she posts so faithfully um like every day um and she and her daughter have a a podcast i've talked about called a quilting life and they have uh they do a video of it too of just them chatting but i think that's really fun um so she has written a new book called labor of love scrappy quilts at the heart of home and um it kind of came at the right time for me although i really could make scrappy quilts from my just my stash my stash is scrappy but she gives a ton of advice on storing managing and using scraps Um, and she is absolutely the most organized quilter with the most beautiful sewing room you've ever seen so i think we all should perk up our ears and listen to the things she has to say Um, but she just has all these at the beginning um, so it's, it's a book of patterns yes but she has a section at the beginning called all about scraps and um, storing scraps, tracking your scraps, um, little tips like if you use the same background fabric in a lot of quilts, save all your scraps for that so that you can use those up as background fabric and you know it'll go with any yardage you have. I thought that was really um, good information. She talks about storing pre-cuts and um, how to sort them and, um, and how to use them. And, and, and so I think it's uh, it's full of a lot of great information. She even talks about different kinds of rulers that help you when you're doing more scrap quilts. So um, so yes, Labor of Love by Sherry McConnell. And um, but she's also got a um, a bunch of quilt patterns that obviously are very scrappy. And one of the things that I really like about her style, and she's got this quilt at the end called Sunshine. If you can hear some scratching in the background, my dog is trying to get into the room where I'm recording. Um, But one of the the style of quilt that she does that I really admire um, is she will do a a one block quilt. um, And often she's doing this to showcase a fabric line. So every block is um, like a background in a single fabric. And it's a beautiful way to showcase an entire line of fabric, but also a great way to use up a bunch of scraps because in and, and it makes it less chaotic when you just have background and one fabric um, but she they're not just plain one block quilts she does a lot of um, cool sashing and cornerstones and things like that to, to really um, umph the oomph factor a little bit there so um, I'm loving loving labor of love 
And if you have any like advice on how you store scraps, you know, I know you're supposed to iron them and cut them into these shapes, but I can never really make myself do that. And maybe I am just not cut out for that. Maybe I should just save the bigger ones and and bless somebody else with them and get a little bit more comfortable with just throwing away the little random, you know, bits and bobs. She even actually though has a um, a quilt that's perfect for uh, leftover jelly roll scraps and um, string quilts. And those are really good ways to use up those little bits that I have a hard time throwing away, but I don't know. So lots of inspiration there. Speaking of quilts that uh, really show off a whole fabric line, I should do one with this bundle that I have from my friend Minky Kim, who designs for Riley Blake. Her new line is called Idyllic. And I've got this bundle right in front of me so that I could talk about it. Uh, first of all, the colors are beautiful. We've got navies and three other colors of more medium to light blues. Um, what would I call this? Kind of a corally orange and some mustard yellows. You know, uh, Mickey and I joke about she loves yellow. I don't usually love yellow, but I've become really fond of a of a real goldy mustard yellow, um, especially because it looks so good with navy. Um, and then of course there's some pinks and even a little bit of a lavender here. And um, and always my favorite of her uh, prints usually have the white background because it really highlights her designs. So it's um, the focus fabric are these big florals. You know what she's got in here that's really cool is there are three different colors, one, two, three, the navy, um, kind of coral and mustard um, striped bias striped well no I guess yeah there's it's striped on the bio so if you do a straight cut I'm guessing here it'll have that um, and use it for binding it has that you know diagonal binding look which is so cool I love that um, but they feature her great little little hand drawings um, oh it's so cute she's got these little um, bottles of says rose lemonade and little quotes a day like this and um, dried flowers it's just super super cute and she always does great um, little florals too so anyway so that's idyllic and um, I have been waiting for this to come out for a while and um, I think you guys are gonna love it I will put a picture in the show notes but I am still considering what to do with this this great bundle um, so while I'm thinking about that, I'm going to do my beginner's improv quilt. Let's move on to books. What are you guys reading these days? I started reading, not reading, listening to Truly Madly Guilty by Leon Moriarty, Australian author. I usually love her. She is the one that wrote, um, what's that called? Big Little Lies. And I started this book as an audio book um, a couple years ago, maybe a year ago on vacation and could not get any traction with it. So I started it over because I usually really like this author and I thought I was just probably not in the right mind space then. So I've been listening to it and I'm struggling with it. I'd be curious to hear from some of you <laughs> if it gets better. Um, I did post about this in the Simple Handmade Everyday Facebook group and somebody else said that they abandoned it as well. My problem with it is so far I don't like any of the characters none of the all the characters are sort of irritating and th that I was thinking is that the kind of book she always writes because if you think about if you read or watched Big Little Lies you know everybody is pretty flawed maybe the the single mom what was her name maybe Jane um She's the only one that didn't really have like really big flaws. <laughs> so maybe that's really it. I really, I need a hero. I need somebody, uh, a hero in my book. So um, I was listening to it this morning while I was doing some stuff thinking, okay, I'm going to push through. I'm going to keep going. I'm not even that far. I'm not even quite 20% in, um, but I'm just like, oh, I don't know. There's just so much to listen to these days, right? I'm just not sure I want to spend any more time with it. But in terms of books that I'm reading, um, I'm reading a book called Cozy by Isabel I think it's Gillies and I also posted about this in the in the Facebook group and it was a book I'm not sure if it's still on sale it was on sale really cheap like a dollar 99 or 2.99 or something like that no maybe it was all of four dollars but it is a book all about being cozy and again 
making the everyday spaces of your life cozy here. I'm going to, where's my Kindle? Hang on one second. So if you are a cultivator of cozy, then she is exactly up your aisle. And here I pulled up my Kindle so I could read you. So it was the Kindle version of the book that uh, was really inexpensive. But she talks about what is cozy and how different things are cozy to different people. She even has, she gave the whole list of things that are cozy. And one of the things that she said was jury duty. I'm like, okay, agree to disagree on jury duty. But you know, I kind of get it. The very first time I did jury duty, I was a young mom and it was a day to myself. I read an entire Maeve Binchy book that day, never got called in to actually be on a jury. So, you know, I had a good coffee. So all those things can be pretty cozy. Um, so she talks about all the things that are, you know, that, that, you personally are cozy, think are cozy. And it's not just, you know, fuzzy slippers and candles and things like that. It's just, you know, like we were talking about earlier, like little corners of your home. So she does talking, she does talk about, um, she has the book broken up into different sections, um, about the home, about making your bed, what's cozy about the bath, the kitchen, decorating, pets, clothes, postcards, even. My friend Frances loves postcards, so she loved that. She was where I got this book learned about this book from. Um, I haven't gotten there yet, but I still feel pretty uh, good about recommending this book. There's a section on sewing and quilting and flowers and just nature and just things like that. Oh, there's a section on civics, which is probably why she thinks, uh, you know, doing your duty is cozy. Um, time alone, walks, things like that. Just all these, these different things. It's just a wonderful book to read for read one little section for 10 minutes in the morning to kind of get your head on straight for the day is kind of how I think about that so it's called cozy the art of rearranging yourself in the world I'll put a link in the show notes um, so definitely check that out now I, I will also recommend another book well I'm not sure I'm going to recommend it I will tell you about I'm going to equivocate on that that I just bought yesterday because somebody posted in the quilt fiction Facebook group about it and the the Kindle version was 99 cents <laughs> and it gets a really good reviews and it's called the sewing machine um here I'm trying to get to the cover on a Kindle book which is not always so easy the sewing machine two families three secrets millions of stitches by Natalie Fergie um, and here's one of the reviews, a tapestry of strong characters and accomplished writing. But this got so many good reviews that I felt I can, I can gamble on a 99 cent um, Kindle version for that. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, I've been trying to, speaking of being cozy, you know what's not cozy to me most of the time? Social media and the news. So I'm trying to not engage in that as much and pick up a book and um and do more actual reading so what else in the book that's about it oh um i did last podcast i told you i was re-listening to <laughs> don't laugh at me a louise penny book called the brutal telling and that story um, you know, it has its own uh, mystery from beginning to end, but as is true with all Louise Penny, Inspector Gamache books, they, um, there's always overarching stories and it flows into the next book, which is called Bury Your Dead, which um, there are a few of these Inspector Gamache books I've only read once. Uh, many I've read more than once and listened to more than once. But I kind of realized at some point that um, my library did not have all the audiobooks. And I can't really find them, which is a bit of a bummer. Um, and Barrier Dead is one of them. And I couldn't quite remember how it panned out. So that's the thing about being my age. <laughs> is that you, every time you reread a book, it's like reading it, um, you know, from scratch. But a lot of that really is because the plot is not as important as the plot is just a device to spend time with these characters in Three Pines, you know, like visiting old friends. And so I'm picking that book up from the library this week. I'm so glad they have curbside pickup now. But there's a another podcast. I think I've talked about it here before. It's called Out of the Ordinary. And these two women, um, I recently found out, are also huge Louise Penny, Inspector Gamache fans, and they did an entire podcast about it. It's called the True Crime Podcast, which I think is interesting because Inspector Gamache books are fiction. They're not true crime. Um, so I'm not sure what that was about. Um, but 
they are both, you know, writers and they're very articulate, way more articulate than me. And and what they said just re represented everything that I have always wanted to say about these books. And and really what that is, I, I'll put the link so you should go listen to it, but um, that Louise Penny has a way of making you feel like the everyday things are absolutely the best things about life. A lot of place and food. So she talks a lot about, um, <laughs> a lot of scenes take place in, in the bistro in this, um, this wonderful little remote town in uh, Quebec, just right on the Vermont border with the U.S. Um, it's called Three Pines. And so they're always serving up these big bowls of cafe au lait. And one of the, um, the people on this podcast, Christy, she was saying that she always, she finds herself when she gets to one of those scenes, putting the book down and going, making herself a big cafe au lait to drink while she reads it, because you just, you just want to be a part of that. The other um, person on the, the other co-host, Lisa Joe, she doesn't make the cafe au lait. What she does is she goes and finds a really good bakery and buys croissants because croissants always are, you know, figuring in. And I feel the same way about that. It, um, all the, the food that's served, it's, you know, um, beef bourguignon or a stew with crusty bread and a good red wine followed up by a pear tart at the end. And you're just like, oh my gosh, I want to live like this. I want to eat really good quality food that's pretty simply prepared, but just there's an elegantness because there's, there's fresh flowers on the table and, and, you know, neighbors will bring over some good cheese to have with it. And I'm just like, oh yes, I want to live in this world. I want to be their friend. Um, and I have always said that reading these books makes me want to be a better person. I want to eat better. I want to, um, she talks about the clothes and it's, you know, everything's always good quality and simple and elegant. And I just, I want to dive right into that. Even the furniture is, is like, you know, like really, Everything's nice and, and but simple lines and um, there's always a fire going, candles, things like that. It's wonderful. So anyways, um, it, th that's the type of thing that it makes you appreciate. Oh, also, there's a lot of literature and poetry and art and more than just the, the physical surroundings, the, the character of Inspector Gamache is, um, even though he is the head of homicide, he is above all kind and thoughtful and... Um, believes the best in people, even though he has seen the worst. And so these are all obviously very admirable qualities, but he's not perfect. Um, he can be a little arrogant and, you know, so his flaws come through as well. And um, so anyways, enough about, I've talked uh, extensively about um, <laughs> these books and that author and Inspector Gamache. Um, but definitely go check out that podcast if you were a fan, because um, I think that you'll really enjoy it. All right, let's move on to uh, TV and movies and things like that. It's funny, I last podcast talked about that the movie Ford versus Ferrari was recommended and I uh, begrudgingly thought, okay, I will give this a try. And several people chimed in and said, you know what? I really love that movie. I, I said the same thing to, to my husband, um, but I really enjoyed it. And I'd still want to see it, but we are having a hard time finding it. I, at this point, all we can do, I think, is buy it. And um, it's not even that expensive, but it's like $15, which if you went to a movie, you know, could five people get in for $15? No way. But somehow uh, that seems like, oh, I don't want to, I just, I want to rent it. I want it to be free. <laughs> <laughs> between Netflix and Amazon and Hulu, I feel like it should be free. So I'm going to just put a pin in that one for a while. But it was interesting how many people um, told me that they really did enjoy it. The family movie that we have really enjoyed um, in the last couple of weeks is Enola Holmes. It's on Netflix, I'm sure. I guess it could be Prime, but I'm pretty sure it's Netflix. And it has um, Millie Bobby Brown, who you might know from Stranger Things. And um, it was really fun. So it is, Enola is the younger sister of Sherlock Holmes. Um, Sherlock and what's his brother's name? Mycroft. And the mother of Sherlock Holmes in this um, scenario is Helena Bonham Carter. So Enola was raised pretty much by her mother alone. Her uh, two brothers are quite a bit older, and she had a very unconventional upbringing um, by her mother that included a lot of literature and sword fighting and combat training and all kinds of weird things that would not normally happen in this time frame. Um, eventually, her the mother goes missing, and Enola is on the case to figure it out. And so... Um, 
Sherlock and Mycroft figure in a little bit, um, but it's really about her, and it's uh, it's a very fun movie, and it does some kind of weird things um, from a storytelling standpoint. Um, she talks directly to the camera. She has a, a can you hear the dog? Sorry about that. Um, she talks, you know, breaks the fourth wall, talks directly to the camera in a very humorous way. Um, I know some people kind of find that off-putting, but it really worked here. I've also been hearing a lot about the Netflix show called The Home Edit. Um, and, you know, I love a good organizational show usually. Loved the um, the Tidying Up series from Marie Kondo. Um, but even with that one, I watched maybe the first four, and then I felt like, okay, I got it. You know, um, with the Marie Kondo one, uh, it was nice because she definitely tackled people with different issues. Um, you've got the, the woman who um, was a widower her, whose house looked fine to the casual observer, but every bedroom and closet was stuffed. Um, you had people who um, were living together for the first time and trying to, you know, meld their belongings, you know, just like different people, people with toddlers and toys, things like that. Um, and so all these people have different organizational issues, right? Well, the home edit um, are these two women who apparently love everything in rainbow order. And um, they, in the show, they have two parts of it, which is kind of interesting. They tackle a celebrity organizing project and then a normal person. And so the, fir the first episode is Reese Witherspoon. <laughs> <laughs> um, and one of, I don't know, some, one of her many homes, I'm sure she decided to devote this, um, huge closet to all of her, um, costumes, like things from Legally Blonde and, um, Big Little Lies and what else has she been in? You know, things like that and her, and her gowns. And it was very fun to, um, watch their process for how they categorize and organize uh, closets and things like that into different zones and they also just they have these wonderful products like hangers for scarves and they use a lot of uh, clear acrylic boxes for jewelry which normally I wouldn't really like but it really allows you to um, organize it but still see it so that was fun um, and then the second part of that show was a doctor a woman doctor who had a closet that oh my gosh was like a room and was just a dumping ground for everything. And it was really, really fun to see how they, again, they organized and they how they sort the clothes and, you know, really putting everything on matching hangers covers a multitude of sins. It really does. Um, but the, she, she wore a lot of blue. They actually made an entire blue section for her. And this is your section for scrubs. And this is the, where you come in and when you come home from the hospital and you just dump everything, your stethoscope and your name tag and all this stuff and all your scrubs are here. And um, so they just really do a great job of organizing, but I kind of felt like I, first of all, I watched it on, um, you know, on my tablet, right? And I'm just fast forwarding, fast forwarding, just like, just get to it. I don't need it to be a really long show. I kind of just want to see the before, a little bit of the process and after, but I don't think I can just watch. I think, I feel like they're all going to be the same, but they do include the celebrity, which I honestly don't usually care about. And then the everyday person. So if you like organizing shows, um, it's definitely gotten some mixed reviews. I have heard that um, the, the books, they have two books on the bestseller list right now, that the books are better than the show, probably because there's a lot, uh, you know, less of the chit chat. They try to go for the real personality thing. And the reality is, is uh, there's these two women who own it. And then they have like a team of three or four girls and everybody basically looks exactly the same. They're all dressed in black with long blonde hair and, um, and so I think just uh, seeing it visually in a book could, could be, if, if I could go to a bookstore right now and just, you know, sit there with a cup of coffee and look at the book, that's exactly what I do. But that's probably not going to happen. So that's the home edit. Um, I am still continuing with my forever long binge of McLeod's Daughters, um, which is an Australian uh, TV show on Acorn. It was so funny. I was scrolling through. I must follow Acorn on Instagram or Facebook or something. And they had a thing that said, describe your favorite Acorn show in five words or less. And that was a really fun thread to go through. And I found like several new shows <laughs> um, by sort of taking those clues and Googling them. So, um, but I definitely recognized ones, you know, like, you know, Cranky Doctor Seaside Town or something, you know, which is... Um, Doc Martin and, um, you know, two sisters 
on a ranch or whatever. That's McLeod's daughter. But there's definitely, um, I want to definitely look into Mrs. Fisher's mysteries and something called 800 Words, which is about a, a dad widower who moves to New Zealand. Um, so I'm totally loving these down under kind of shows lately. Um, and Miss Fisher, I think she's Australian. She could be Scottish. No, no. Agatha Raisin is Scottish. I think Mrs. Fisher is Australian. So, so there you go. Um, so I'm still watching that and I'm itching for like the new masterpiece season. So at this point in October, you know, this would be the new season of Poldark or, or whatever. Um, so the all creatures great and small is going to is that's going to be one of their big drops and that is not until january but there is a new masterpiece show called flesh and blood that starts tonight um and i'm excited about that it's one of those epic family dramas um where the mother i think she's she's a widow she remarries her adult children whose lives are a mess are definitely having issues with this um it has you know just packed with all people from all the british shows including um amelda staunton from harry potter uh she played professor umbridge uh she's married in real life to carson from downton abbey fyi um, she, she plays the next door neighbor. It's got Stephen Rea. It's got actors that, you know, from Cranford, Granchester, Victoria, all those kinds of shows. Um, so that's called Flesh and Blood. And I haven't watched it yet, but um, I'm going to see if I can get it, access to it today. So that sounds like fun. Wow, this episode is getting long and I haven't gotten to one of the things I really wanted to talk about um, on the homemaking side of things, which is called the Sunday basket. So I don't know where I came across this online. Oh, I don't know. It, it was a Facebook group. Somebody talked about that she was making her own Sunday basket. Um, so this is an organizational technique and it's a whole, there's a podcast, there's products, all kinds of things. But this is a way to um, control the paper and the lists in your home to help you, you capture all the random thoughts that you have and organize them in a way that you don't forget about them so you don't have to keep them in your head so that you feel more peaceful yet you get a whole bunch done um, through the beauty of batching like activities okay so here's the idea um, you start with a basket so there is actually a product called the sunday basket that um, is pretty cool and i started with my own just um, inbox and file folder system which is a totally good way to start um, but I did reach out to the Sunday basket people and they sent me a, an actual Sunday basket. And so the idea is you take all of your paper. Now, and, and at first I was like, I'm not sure I need this because I really don't have as much paper as I used to. Um, you know, like when the kids were in school and, and all that kind of stuff, I do a lot of things digitally. Um, I still do like to write a lot of things longhand, but I don't manage, um, a ton of little pieces of paper um, anymore but what I do have is a lot of thoughts a lot of ideas a lot of projects and a lot of lists and I've been using a bullet journal for, for many years now and um, I love it and I love my little moleskin journal but the reality is that I just keep re rewriting lists and rewriting lists and never really going back to them. They're not in a place. I'm a real out of sight, out of mind gal. And so if they're, even though I would, I would diligently make a table of contents so I could go back to these various lists of um, projects that need to be done around the house, movies I want to see, recipes I want to try, um, habits I'm trying to form, um, things that just randomly I need to get done this month. Um, you know, the shopping that needs to be done before someone goes to school, all those kinds of lists. I'm, I'm a list maker, but I just keep rewriting them and losing them and have all these random scraps of paper, which is why I tried the bullet journal and it, it did work. But again, um, it's not easy to review. Okay. So that's my problem with that. So the concept of the Sunday basket is you have a place like an inbox. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to rabbit trail here again. If you are familiar with the David Allen getting things done framework, it's very much like that. Um, I just heard uh, the woman who invented the Sunday basket. Her name is Lisa Woodruff. Um, she says that she's been told that it's basically the framework for getting things done, but she's apparently never read that book. So it's one of those things that both of these people came up with this kind of idea uh, independently. 
So once again, you've got your Sunday basket. Every piece of paper that you come across in your day-to-day life, you make a decision. You ask yourself this question, can it wait till Sunday? Now, if you're, if, if you, if you're like the, the uh, David Allen person, he would say, can it be done in two minutes or less? If it can, do it then. Um, Lisa Woodruff would argue with that and said, it, can it wait till Sunday? If it can, it must. <laughs> and you drop it into your Sunday basket. Okay. So for, for this, um, you know, so ma- even mail, I don't, so, you know, so you got to do what works for you, right? Um, if it's a piece of mail that I need to act on later on, then I will put it in there. But I actually go through my mail as I walk back from the mailbox and I walk right by the recycling bin and 95% of it goes right in the recycling bin. So I'm not going to pour, pile all that into my Sunday. That, that would seem defeating to me. But um, all these little random thoughts that you have <laughs> during the week, like um, my glass measuring cup has a crack in it. I should buy another one. Um, Okay, maybe you want to do them. <laughs> I have this multiple measuring cups, so that could wait till Sunday. I scribble it on a piece of paper. She has you throw, write everything on index cards. I actually just cut up um, scratch paper into eighths. And so I just would write order measuring cup. Um, I, I track um, our expenses in every dollar as a budget. So when I get notifications that the water bill just came in, like in my email, I'll just scribble on there, you know, water this amount and throw it in there. Um, if somebody needs me to return something or I need to check on, you know, if a reef end has come through, I throw it in there. Actually, I processed mine yesterday, but I know I've thrown some other things in here. So, oh, okay. So here's here's something I threw in there. New bedding for the boys. When I realized that wasn't going to be a, um, a quilt that would be a bed quilt, I'm like, maybe we should just buy a comforter for them. So I'll think about that next week. Um, I wrote, oh, redecorate the bathroom because we've got some kind of old decor and that's something I kind of want to think about but this is this is exactly the kind of thing I think about this all the time it keeps coming up because I've never captured it so I'm capturing it um here's my other one it says make napkins (laughs) I want to do more sewing for our home um and making we use cloth napkins and I kind of want to look into doing that and I've thought it a million times but it just flies right out of my head um so other types of things, um, you know, like I want to replant a certain a side of the yard that I'm not really happy with. Um, I want to do a particular family bike ride, um, and that keeps coming up, but I always forget it by the time the weekend comes, so I've thrown that in there. Other little quilting projects that I want to remember, like there's a there's a um, table runner quilt I want to make, so a little project, so I just kind of all the things that you what the idea here is to get everything out of your head and onto paper so on sunday you dump out everything on your sunday basket and she has a series of five um they're like file folders she calls them slash pockets because they have a uh, they're they're like a little um binder dividers that have a pocket um and they're in rainbow colors And she has one that's called This Week, one that's called Computer and Calendar, one that's errands, one's Money and Mail, and one is Waiting For. You dump out everything out of your um, Sunday basket, and you basically put them in those categories. And this, again, is like getting things done because he would have you um, divide all the things that you need to take an action on into um, places where you would do it. These are all the calls I need to make. These are the things I need to do at a computer. These are the errands I need to run. These are the things that I need to talk about um, with my husband. These are the things that I need to talk about with my kids, things like that. And and the beauty of all of that is that you're batching it. Whenever you get into one task and you do a bunch of it at once, it's way more efficient than um, you know doing it onesie twosie during the week where you are constantly task switching. So where I see this um, really, you know, sort of pay off is in things like ordering things from Amazon. Um, it is so easy to just hop on and order things right then, right? But I just kind of scribble them down now and throw them in there. And when I sit down on Sunday, sometimes I think, you know what? I don't really need this. And I just throw it away. You know, I just recycle that piece of paper. Um, but I'm just on Amazon and I can just boom, 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 order everything we need. I can boom, 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 enter everything into our budget. Um, I can organize my errands list. And uh, the woman who invented the system, she actually sets aside like three hours and she really does 
everything in her Sunday basket on Sundays um, because she has a business and she her idea is that she would really like to tackle everything involved in managing her home on one day so that she doesn't have to worry about it while she's focusing on her business during the week. I don't really need to uh, to do it that way. Um, even though I do knock through this, the computer and the um, all the money stuff, you know, any bills to be paid, stuff like that, I do knock through that and, you know, I'm through this whole basket in less than an hour. But you could also, um, in the same way that the fly lady says you have a desk day, um, you could save that computer and calendar stuff for planning your week or whatever during that day. And you could split it up through your week so that um, your Sunday basket time is really just about organizing your time of planning your week and dividing up the tasks that you need to do and knowing when you're going to do them, putting them on the calendar. Um, so that's the basics of it. Um, she actually has, those are what she calls the 1.0 uh, slash pockets or folders. She also has what's called the 2.0, which break down things even further. So there is a, a set of purple ones that's all about maintaining your home. Uh, a set of blue ones. I mean, you can make these whatever you want, but this is how she has it set up. Blue ones about um, managing your family. Green is managing money. And pink is um, for yourself. So for the managing your home section, I have one that's all about home maintenance, where I just have a, a list of all the ongoing maintenance projects. And that's a list that I was constantly rewriting, um, you know, like get the carpets cleaned and replace the rug in the family room, just all these things that pop into my mind all the time. And if I can just know that they've been captured somewhere, I can stop thinking those thoughts. I have one for the yard um, with some projects I want to do there. Um, I have one for decor. And um, that's all I really have for, for the home stuff right now. I'm kind of new to the system. For family, um, I just have a general one. Um, what is on this one? It's just kind of my list that talks about, uh, oh, that just anything that I have like that I need to make more masks and so my son's going to go back to school. <laughs> that's on that. I have one that's called Family Fun. That's uh, where I've got movies that we can watch as a family, hikes, bike rides, things like that. Um, the fact that I want to start um, playing uh, card games with my family. I've got one for school info. Um, I've got one for um, vacation. And so these pockets are just places when you come across information that you want to be reminded of later, but there's no action to take them on, but you don't want to forget them. Um, and, and let me just keep going here. Um, the money one, I don't have a lot. You know, money is pretty simple in this house. And for the ones for me, um, I have a general one that talks about classes that I purchased and that I should do. Um, ideas about uh, prompts for posting on Facebook. And then I have one on quilting um, where I just have these random little notes in there. Here's one that says create a neutral quilt um, improv for um, the wall behind our bed. Like I just had that idea one day. I'm like, you know what? I don't want to forget that. And then I have a sewing one um, that's just sewing in general, not quilting, that has a little note card in there that says sew linen pants. <laughs> <laughs> Since the pandemic, I have become a huge fan of sort of elastic waist or drawstring linen pants. I don't really wear sweats. I know a lot of people have lived the pandemic in sweats, and I don't really do that, but I did discover linen pants, and I love them. I have three pair now, and I thought, you know what? This would not be hard to make. It uh, might be a good way to get back into some clothing sewing. Um, so anyways, so again, kind of like the fly lady system, um, you go through your, you know, your, uh, that first level uh, of folders every week, the computer and calendar, errands, you know, all those to-dos. You get them on your calendar. You figure out when you're going to do them. It helps you be realistic about how much time you really have to spend on things. And then basically you pick one category of these other ones to focus on every week. So, um, you know, like this could be the week for, and, and if you follow them on social media, they'll tell you this is the week for purple pockets. <laughs> so like say that's your home. So this is, you pull out all those slash pockets and you kind of look through them. Is there a maintenance thing that I should tackle? Um, is there something that I should do to get one of these projects moving forward on the yard? You know, should I head over to home goods and buy new, um, you know, pillow, throw pillows for decor? Like it just have, has you um, look at all those things to see if there's something that you need to put on your to-do list or your calendar to move forward so you, that 
um, you're very in a very organized way. They're kind of like zones um, and you just focus on one per week to move forward on. So anyway, so that's the Sunday basket and I've been using it for about a month now and um, I'm really enjoying it. I It's just very freeing to know that um, any thought I have, I have a place to capture that that is not a random book page in a book in my bullet journal that I will never find again. I'll throw it in there and at the end of the week, I'll put it on a list that I know that I'll review at least once a month um, for, you know, ongoing projects, but all of the little day-to-day -day things, there's a very organized way to take care of those. So anyways, I wanted to share that. Um, I'm loving it. There's, she's got, you can look on YouTube. There's some people that go through it. And um, if you buy the system, then there's like two full webinars that really explain to you how to use the, the system. Well, I have really talked your heads off today. So let me just close with thanking a few people for reviews. Oh, I love it when I find out that I've got reviews. So thank you to E Ham Hobbies, Quilt Crazy Hiker, and Gina Marie 69 for leaving absolutely sweet and wonderful reviews. It just makes my day every single time I read one of those. So I really appreciate that. And other than that, I just encourage you to leave a rating or review. Um, consider joining us over on the Simple Handmade Everyday Facebook page and just keep sewing and noticing the beautiful things in every day. I'll see you next time. You can find me online at my blog, Simple Handmade Every Day, on Instagram at Kristen Esser, and please consider joining us over at the Simple Handmade Every Day Facebook group so that we can keep the conversation going.